Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a tropical disturbance offshore of the northeast coast. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next tropical disturbance will impact the eastern or gulf states of the United States? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, I'd also like to invite you to join our very fun and very exciting Discord server that's going to be in the pinned comments down below. We've completely revamped the server. There's tons of fun weather games going on. I mean, the activity is out of control on there. If you love weather or if you love direct weather, I would highly recommend you join that server. I'm also active in it as well. All right, now we're taking a look at our low pressure location. And as you can see, it's offshore of Cape Cod and New Jersey, Long Island. It's pretty far offshore. And really, it's not going to impact the East Coast too much. We might get some gusty winds from this one. We're not going to see precipitation from this one. Uh, so we're really going to just need to watch it closely, mostly for Canada. All right, now we're taking a look here at our satellite imagery. And as you can see, it does have a nice spin to it as well, but it definitely has broken up. It's not a very organized storm. It would probably be a subtropical storm if it was to develop that far, but it does not seem very likely at all at this point. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at some of our spaghetti models here, which is going to give us a good idea of where this storm is headed. All right, now here it is, our spaghetti models. And as you can see, uh, we definitely know that Newfoundland is going to potentially see some pretty uh, close impacts there if this storm was to be on the more northern side of things of what these models are showing. But you can see many of them keep it well offshore, which would mean little to no impacts. It does eventually have the remnants heading towards Portugal and Spain potentially as well. This is multiple, multiple models, and each color line there is a different model. All right, now here's your Canadian ensemble model, and this one I wanted to show because look at how different it is. The average shows it hitting Newfoundland there, which would definitely mean way more impacts as far as rain and maybe some slight wind. It wouldn't be major impacts by any means. The lowest pressure I can see any of the models showing this one get down to is about a 1006 millibar low pressure system, which means probably would not be very intense whatsoever, but still could lead to some rain and possibly some gusty winds. All right, now here's your GFS ensemble model, and you can see it keeps it much further south uh, of Newfoundland there. So this one does disagree with that model, and that model is the outlier, which means it is probably less likely than the other solutions, but I just wanted to show it because it is on the table at this point as a possibility. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to start talking about the National Hurricane Center's opinion on all of this. All right, now here we are taking a look at the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we only have about a 20% chance of development, which I certainly agree with. I think that we have 20% or less at this point of development. The only reason I made a video about this is because, well, the weather's pretty quiet. So this is kind of the biggest thing going on, even though it doesn't seem very imminent at all. Now let's go ahead and show the five-day outlook here as well. And as you can see, it's going to kind of just sit around and again, very slim chance at development. I think this one is going to pretty much remain a disturbance and not develop much further than that. It's just going to remain an invest and eventually fizzle out. But again, we could have some minor impacts, I would say, there for the Atlantic coast of Canada. Now let's move on to our intensity guidance here. And as you can see, most models have it heading downward from this point, but there is a few green ones that do take it into what I would call subtropical storm status because I don't think it will be a tropical storm. Uh, but if this was to be the case, we would hit maybe around 35 mile per hour, or sorry, 35 knots, and that would be enough to briefly make it a tropical storm, which would be interesting. I think that would be our sea named storm, so that would be interesting, but I don't think that's very likely at this point. All right, now we're going to go ahead and move on to a little bit of our model guidance. So let's go ahead and take a look at our cyclonic vorticity. And the only reason I'm using this is because it's going to give us a good idea of where the storm will be located. And this is going to be basically for today. And you can see that it's offshore of New England and the Northeast there. And then we're going to go ahead and move it towards about Wednesday morning here on that cyclonic vorticity. And you can see it will be offshore there of Nova Scotia there at this point and it's weakened quite a bit on this model and then by the time we reach maybe Thursday at about 2 a.m. it will have weakened significantly and it'll be pretty close to uh, again Newfoundland but really probably not bringing any sort of impacts 
uh, to there. And then by the time we reach about Saturday at 2 a.m., you can see it has completely fizzled out and it will just be gone by about that point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on and we're gonna move on to our simulated radar for this one, our total rainfall, some of the wind impacts we could have, and then we're gonna get into our official direct weather forecast for this disturbance. All right, now here's that simulated radar. You can see there is some showers associated with this one, mostly on the southern side of this, which would really diminish the chances for impacts of rainfall as far as Newfoundland is concerned. This is by about Tuesday morning, which is gonna be tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. And as you can see, by the time we reach Friday, it is gone. So really, we're going to see that precipitation fizzle out very quickly. The only chance of impacts that I would say we have is maybe some slightly gusty winds is going to be the biggest impacts that we could really see. I don't think rain hitting land is going to be much of a threat whatsoever. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the total rainfall. And you can see those pinks there in the middle of the Atlantic. That's pretty much our tropical disturbance there and its rainfall. So as you can see, not very major impacts whatsoever from this one. We're definitely not expecting too much, really. Maybe two inches over the ocean. So obviously hardly anybody is going to be there. So not really any impacts as far as total rainfall is concerned. Now let's move on to that total wind. We're taking a look at the entire Atlantic, and there is a little bit of an area that's a little bit darker blue, and that's where we're having some gusty winds there near the low pressure system. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a zoomed in look, and this is going to be moved on. That was about today, and then we're going to move on now towards about Thursday. And I think that this storm is going to bring some gusty winds onshore to the east coast of the United States. So not only the United States, but also Canada. So I think that this one could have some impacts. As far as wind, it's not going to be any sort of damaging winds, but it's just going to be a little extra gusty along the East Coast, but especially there for Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. You'll probably definitely notice that it is a bit more windy than what is typical for many, many of those regions there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and talk about our direct weather official forecast for this one. All right, now here we are taking a look at Invest 95L in the next seven days forecast here. You can see its location is 38.5 degrees north by 67 degrees west. Its winds are currently 34 miles per hour and our low pressure center is a 1010 millibar low pressure system. And as you can see, we do have on our red track map there the possibility for a Newfoundland impact, but also there's a good odds that it stays far south of Newfoundland as well. So we're really gonna have to wait and see with this one and see what it does as time moves forward. All right, now briefly before I end this video, I do wanna mention to you guys a more news about the Discord server, what we've been doing as far as new work on the server. It's very exciting and I've been an active part of it. Uh, we've gained tons and tons of members. I think we've gained at least 100 members since two days ago when I first shouted it out on the YouTube channel. So it is becoming significantly more active and I would love for all of you to be a part of that if you do like weather. Uh, we have general discussions, we have discussions about different regions, so there's like a Northeast discussion. So if you live in the Northeast, you could communicate with other weather lovers from the Northeast. We also have one for the Northwest, the Southwest, the Midwest, the Great Plains, the South Central, the Southeast. So basically, no matter where you live, there is gonna be a sub-community of people that do also live in your similar region and do love to talk about the weather where you live. Uh, we also have tropical weather discussions going on actively, winter discussions for the upcoming winter. Uh, we also have weather games, and that's the newest thing that I'm very excited about. We have a guess the tornado game where you post a picture of a tornado, and then everybody has to guess which tornado it is until somebody finally gets it. We have a guess the hurricane, guess the snowstorm. We even have a guess the year game where you can post a temperature map or anything from a certain year, and people have to guess which year that's from. Very, very fun games. We also have a storm versus storm game, which is the newest one that I actually came up with. Basically how it works is you would say, for instance, which storm do you think was worse, Katrina or Hurricane Michael? And then people would vote on which one they think was worst. And you can do that for anything. You could say, which snowstorm did you like the most and put two snowstorms versus each other? Anything like that, and then everybody will vote. It's a really fun game, and I really love being a part of it. I'm super, super excited about all the changes. It's been very active, and I can't wait to see it grow. It's growing very rapidly, so if you want to be a part of the earlier history in our Discord server, please join. Uh, it's a total blast, and again, I'm a part of it, so if you've ever wanted to talk about weather with me, I will, I'm will. i actively a part of the discussions going on in the group, so that's a great way to discuss weather with me, and I would love to discuss weather with you as well. Anyway, 
I could talk about it all day because I love it so much. I'm so passionate about the communities we're building, the Facebook one and also the Discord. It's all great fun. Now, yesterday's video was about an upcoming heat wave, and I asked you guys, do you guys like heat waves or do you think it's a nuisance? And two Corey men said the heat waves are a disgusting nuisance, and I got a lot of comments similar to this one. Uh, and I definitely agree. I think heat waves can be really, really repetitive for sure. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.